car companies are coming to realize that uh, operating connected cars is pretty much putting them into the, uh, becoming fleet operators, okay? So we are several years and several steps away from achieving this phenomenon, but when we do, it will transform the industry in terms of the, the valuations of these industries, the revenue opportunities and growth opportunities, and it will change the customer relationships. Well, security is the big one, and the industry is looking for standards and, and guidance and direction on this, and basically it's, it's a, a riddle with no simple solution, uh, because the car, because of it, it is an open platform, it's uh, by, by definition a, a vulnerable platform, a lot of attack surfaces. And so what's coming by the end of this year, early next year, will be the first implementations of intrusion detection systems, the kind of thing you take for granted on your phone or your desktop computer. Uh, the next step for the industry is determining exactly what to do when an intrusion is detected. Uh, do you notify the customer or not? Uh, it might be the customer that's actually intruding on the vehicle. Uh, of course you notify the, the car manufacturer immediately. Again, that's going to require a connection and not all cars are connected today. Maybe even regulatory authorities need to be notified. Maybe the automotive ISAC needs to be notified. So these are all issues that have yet to be resolved. Uh, the big question that's confronting a lot of companies that are working on automotive security is how do we go about prevention? So one thing to detect, how do we prevent an intrusion without causing a false positive and potentially disabling a valuable vehicle system? Well, I, I get into these debates quite often with people. Uh, there are those uh, in the industry who still feel very strongly that the fewer attack surfaces, the more secure the car will be, the fewer connections, and uh, who are vehemently opposed to software updates. But uh, my position is essentially you will not have a secure vehicle unless you have connectivity and uh, software update capability because there's so much code in cars. It's already buggy when it leaves the factory. It's going to need to be uh, protected. Um, the other question is uh, that, that comes up frequently with our clients is, uh, are automated vehicles going to be connected or do they have to be connected? You know, what is 5G going to do uh, to enable automated driving? And I, I think it, it's kind of a belts and braces uh, kind of a proposition. Uh, it would be, it's great to have connectivity, but as you heard uh, on the early panels here, uh, even Volvo is thinking just cloud connectivity, they're not really focusing on vehicle to vehicle. Uh, but 5G will enable vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure and vehicle to everything will be helpful but it's important to bear in mind that the cars that are being designed today that are uh, in the early uh, implementation of automated driving have no connectivity at all um, so the industry's still kind of working that out and this is a big standards conversation which is a perfect subject of conversation at this event mm -hmm. So yes, we had a little discussion this morning about ownership, will these cars be owned or not, and uh, I think we're seeing new ownership models. We're seeing car sharing and ride hailing and people making that decision in cities like Hamburg in, in particular uh, to eschew uh, the vehicle purchase altogether. So it, it is creating that opportunity, and, and the, some of the technology required for these cars to enable a fully autonomous experience uh, is going to be prohibitively expensive for people to actually own the car, at least in the early stages. Uh, what we have today are basically driverless shuttles in, in various places around the world. There are probably at least a dozen implementations of these low-speed uh, shuttles in operation already. That, that's a precursor to smaller vehicles, uh, sedans and things. Um, but the core issue that not everybody, as was clear from the conversations this morning, have, have wrapped their brains around is if we get to a level four or level five vehicle within 10 or 15 years, why would you own that vehicle? Okay, that, that's, that's, the, that's the core issue because if you look at what Drive Sweden is working on, they're talking about getting rid of parking garages completely. Uh, and if that's the case, then I don't think we're talking about an ownership pro proposition.